Action. Uh, hi, welcome to part. Uh, uh, welcome to the after show video of Francis von Zernick's head full of useless information about movies. I myself am Francis von Zernick, and this is Shannon Lee, and she was the guest last week and this week, and this is the after show video for part two of two of uh, the radio show podcast. And we just finished both shows, and we're kind of continuing the conversation about the movies. Your list was very interesting. It became, to me, I've known you for a while, and we, we went out a little mm -hmm. bit, and it, it's somehow doing this show, the idea, the premise of being that every week somebody like you, somebody like you means an artist, comes in and talks about movies that have, not their favorite movies, but movies that have influenced mm -hmm. you as a person. Mm -hmm. I, I've known you for a while, and, and, and we I think we know each other pretty well, uh, on and off. And, and But it really l gave me a glimpse into the, a deeper version of you. I'm so deep. I know, it sounds stupid, but it becomes very interesting. And through the, 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 the method of, of finding out uh, movies that are important to you. And you had some really interesting ones, surprising ones. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say it, you got to listen to the show. Um... Are there any movies that you... That, 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 oh, maybe I should have talked about this. Like uh, in The Ride Home. Uh, oh. You know, I, 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 can't, I can't say that because those are going to hit me on The Ride Home. So okay. we really should... Take Pretend we're driving home. But we're driving home. But I will say a few <laughs> that almost made the list. Uh -huh. Okay, um, right. uh, K-19 Widowmaker. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Catherine Wolfgang Bigelow Peterson. directed. Oh, no, okay, you're right. Catherine Bigelow, yeah, yeah. Why do you think Wolfgang Peterson had That first movie yeah, okay. also ma messed me up because that was a movie that, um, it's a true story, they couldn't talk about. Because, again, okay, before Black Hawk Down, we're talking about our boys, Americans, whatever. Russia's a whole different thing. We yeah. are very much a don't leave a man standing. Russia's like, oh, I'm sorry, you have a reactor leak that's killing all your boys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, w you're just going to have to come back here we're not gonna we're not gonna evacuate you even though we have the means to. yeah um and just to see what these boys go through on a nuclear reactor or whatever and they're dying with the radiation poisoning and it recently made me think of everything that happened in japan with you know Oof, and you know yeah. you know these guys are going to go down in a few i mean that you, you, what's your what's your life expectancy she, i mean it's um It'd be more interesting if I had a watch on, but um, <laughs> but I mean, but you know my point. So I mean, you just see these boys when they're going through, and they won't let them off. And just the concept that such a different kind of country that's like, oh, I'm sorry, you're all dying from right. radioactive. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, we're not letting you off. Um, and it, it, it ultimately, I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, of course. But I ultimately, he, he makes yeah, he makes a decision yeah. Yeah. to go to the Americans, and you know. It just—it's very interesting about the. And they couldn't talk about it till after the cold water. They could uh, cold water. Yeah, cold the water. The cold water. Uh, cold when they were on cold water canyon. Cold water canyon. They, then they could discuss it. Riding here to lose the on Czar, Russian. Uh, yeah. Thing. I don't know. <laughs> Invasion of Russia. But but, but what you you when when we were doing the show, and what I think I mentioned at the end of the show, we talked about it a little bit, was, with the exception of one one maybe two movies. Your time, the timeline, because I had you talk about the movies in order of How, when, when you I saw, saw them, them, when they were released, so we get a we get a, a picture of your life, and 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 you, therefore. Mm. But you, it seemed to me like you, your movies kind of stopped. Your influential movies stopped when you started working as an actress, mm. and I wondered, like the first, I, and different. Um, uh, 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 the benchmarks in your career, or when your career took a different direction, or you started accepting or, or changing your mind. Are there movies that have helped you through that section of your life? Because you didn't really talk about that on the show. Well, the reason I didn't really delve into that is because, and the sad commentary, but you wanted to know. Yeah, um, I do. Right? Um, I never got a chance to do the kind of films I would have liked to have done, which is why I stopped making B-movies and fetish okay. movies and so on and so forth, because of my physical stereotype. I mean, pretty much I would need someone to write a character for, I mean, my physical type. Well, what, what, 
you need a I need a Quentin Tarantino movie or a Robert Rodriguez movie with a that needs a you know comic book looking right yeah uh, yeah yeah you know porn star character uh -huh. or like she's you know I need and I I wasn't given the opportunity to do those roles so I mean the reason it didn't impact my acting career my fetish career one I don't have a passion for bondage or fetish or food fighting videos or balloon popping videos I don't have a passion for that it basically the reason it didn't tie in closely to my acting careers because these were more films I would have aspired to do and wasn't being given the opportunity to it was it became more work than Right, but that still, it remains a part of your everyday life. You well, did it for a good amount of time. Uh, it makes, it, the reason it, it, I did for a long time, the reason it did really impact, it now is impacting me now in my career. Because I'm producing my own web series right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm starting to produce some of my own stuff. And what's, and the, my what's the link? How can people watch your web series? Um, I mean, uh, some Gratuitous Violence is the name of the series, but okay, it's on... It's if very, you, you should watch if, it. If you it's, go to Oddly yeah. Disturbing Productions, uh, sorry, OddlyDisturbing.com, it's, it's a comedy web series. It's comedy. Ridiculous. We make it's fun of... Funny. We make yeah. fun of... 1 million BC cave girl videos. I mean, to the I point where, like, just the worst film ever, there's a, like, to the point where you're making films. Like, I, I made before in the past where you're like, there's a chain link fence in the back and it's supposed to take place in cave time. It's so it's ridiculous. It's a C stand, right? Yeah, I, you know, it's just, like, yeah. We do deliberate things to make it a train wreck. Um, I, I, you know, but in each episode, there is some cliche chick fight. Well, and, and because I've done so many videos where there's a yeah, chick fight. Yeah. There's a plethora of videos I've done out there where I get into some random fight, whether it's um, for to go with a series of comic books that came out, or it was just like a wrestling babe thing or whatever. And I'm like, guys are fascinated with chicks fighting. So I'm like, I'm going to make fun of it. And we do a spoof on Kill Bill mm -hmm. with the Vivica Fox yeah, one yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Uman Thurman. And, you know, one of the things I thought was so funny about that is if you watch, if you remember that scene. Very well made scene. They... Yeah. But they use the word bitch so many times. Like, I've never heard... That That script had to look like bitch, 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 Right, bitch, right. Bitch. So we parody that. Uh -huh. And also, instead of making it a beef about, you know, what had actually happened, we make it a beef that she's holding on to since kindergarten. So I basically took what I... Like am, Airplane. And like, uh, yes, uh, basically, that's what yes, you're doing. Yes, and that, that inspired me. So Airplane inspired me to do it. But doing all those B-movies... Mm -hmm where we had to crank it out for this much budget taught me that I can produce something on a budget no one else could. That's true. <laughs> and I actually could walk into a place where they said it's $1,000 a day to shoot here and walk in and there and be like, I've got $100, but right, right. I'm going to smooth the hell out of yeah, you and yeah. you are by the end of the day, you are going to, I'm going to get it. There must have been, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, there must have, uh, like in anybody's career, whether you make Disney pictures or you make uh, 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 something else. Yeah. There, there's, there's a point in everybody's career, and sometimes more than one, when you have a consistent career like you have, mm -hmm. that there's a point where you start to go, what the, what, what am I doing? And sometimes, and maybe it's because uh, the movies are, very, are overly influential to me, but sometimes, like the Sigourney Weaver situation that you're talking mm -hmm. about in the, during the show, talk about aliens. Mm -hmm. At some point in that part of your career where you're like, what am I doing? I'm taking my shirt off. Mm -hmm. And this guy that I don't know is dressed as an astronaut. <laughs> What what am I doing with my life? Yeah, this is, this That's is gotta not where, happen. This is not where yeah. I saw it going. Yeah, and maybe that gets you in like a dark place for an afternoon. It did. And it, are it there did. movies that kind of like it, like you watched at that time in your life where you're like, okay, like we just talk about Basic Instinct, like oh, okay, you know what? That would have been perfect for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not but, gonna get that opportunity. No, so. but. She is Sharon Stone is a remarkable actress, mm -hmm. and she. So I'm not that far off the mark. Mm -hmm. I'm still. Uh, I, I. You know what I'm, I'm looking for? Something during your career that something that got you through a hard time or a wonderful time. 
Um, or is that maybe you don't have an answer? But I, I you know, know. what interests me. What it? Uh, God, I would love to say it was more in front of the camera. It wasn't. It it was more the behind the scenes that developed me than in front of the camera. In okay. front of the camera, well, I didn't feel as empowered as I did at learning filmmaking, learning how to work with a crew, learning the importance of cinematographers, learning the importance of things. It didn't give, I mean, I'd love to give you an answer that just okay. says, oh, that empowered me. I had, it was fun doing it. It was fun doing it. Um, but it was much more stimulating to see how it all worked as far as how it all came together. Okay, so there, there wasn't the, some, there wasn't a point in your career that you said, I, I don't know if I, I want to do this, but you saw a movie a hundred years ago or something that got you through a hard time in your career. Um, yeah, I mean, the list we just went through. Okay, all right, I, mean, I, just, I have to be thorough because, The, the you list know, we yeah. went through are movies that got me through hard times when I was going through hell in my life and the levity of certain fun films that helped me make fun of Okay. Tragic situations going already. on. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, tragic situations going on, and um, uh, I think that the the accepting of me doing, you know, I mean, I have a lot of regrets. If I had it to do over again, I would have done it differently, and I would be lying to you if I said I didn't. How we? And this might be too personal. How 